How's it going? We're going to talk about a Sclepius tuberosa real quick. Uh, seems a few people are real nervous about growing milkweeds in seedling trays. And uh, we're just going to go over that real quick. So on Sclepius tuberosa, what we tend to do is actually grow them out from seed in seedling trays and we hold them over for months. So they've already germinated and they are developing root systems but they seem to be kind of in a stunted state which is really good for us because then we can go ahead and take them and they are almost immediately available to grow so the seedling tray you're looking at has a little bit of discoloration in the leaves uh, some anthocyanin coming out on the leaves uh, it's under a light that is on for about 14 hours in the day so it doesn't try and go dormant. One of the key things with the milkweeds is continue keeping enough light on them so they do not go into dormancy. And uh, for the most part, just doesn't matter how long they are in the seedling stage. We've kept them over six months. So I'm gonna show you, this is the tag from there and it's uh, dated December the 3rd. So these seedlings have been in this tray for December 3rd. Whenever we transplant them out, uh, they do a lot, a lot better in the quarts. Uh, we, we produce them in the plug sizes a little less often. Uh, for the most part, it will grow a little bit, but it's mostly developing that root system. Then when you put that root system in the ground, it just takes off. But whenever we plant them in the quarts, they really enjoy it. These have been, well, there's no date on this, but this is less than a month transplant from tray to quart. They've really grown out. They look good. The aphids really love them. So the moderate caterpillars are really gonna love them. So almost immediately, we can get pretty decent growth on the Asclepius tuberosa from transplanted seedlings. These look very sick, but I assure you they're very healthy. So we'll kind of take a look at one of these uh, seedling plugs. As we can see here, we have the, uh, the the tuberous root, kind of like a taproot looking deal. And then we can see that with the main growth, it looks kind of pathetic. And it's already putting out a uh, side growth there, right at the top of that root. So even if these were to defoliate, which does happen quite often, there is a new growth that will pretty soon shoot up and replace or continue growing with that plant. Uh, but for the most part, everything that we're seeing here in these quarts were the original stems that once looked like this. They transition very quickly, very beautifully. And it's not even that big a deal. So we'll pick up another plug here. And they got the tuberous growths. Again, you know, it's pretty uh, root bound for the most part in plug form. It will fix itself. You don't need to do anything to the roots. Uh, for the most part, you do not want to disturb the elongated tap root or the tuber. Uh, the fibrous roots, for the most part, they don't matter. They come and they go. They matter if you really want the plant to grow faster and uh, reduce transplant shock. So all you do is just boop, stick it in there. Look how rough I was. These will survive. Close to 100% survival rate. We produce thousands of these each season. And then sometimes they come up and they go dormant and sometimes they flower within about 2.5 months from seed. So, do not be afraid to produce these in seedling trays. And don't be too stressed out that, oh no, it's been two months and they've already sprouted. These are, let's see, today is March the 10th? Yeah. So that's all December, January, February. That's over three months in this tray. Alright, that's all I got on this. Bye-bye.